If you've ever made a mistake at work and embarrassed your teammates, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Live Trading. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Ryan Faluna. We have a very, very jam-packed show today, so I hope you are ready. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. I mean, it's Vegas lore, that phrase. All right, folks, happy Thursday, happy day after the Fed decision yesterday. Are we going to have a snap back today? Are we going to take another leg down? Only today will tell. We shall see. I do have my buddy in the back, 13. How you doing, Joe? I'm oh, doing all right this morning. How is everybody else? Uh, judging by the chat, everyone looks good. So, okay, a couple of things to handle here uh, right at the outset. Number one, welcome, everybody. It's good to see you, and good morning. Uh, number two, we have a jam-packed show today. We actually have two all-accesses today. So we're going to do one in the middle of live trading, and we're going to do one after live trading. So be sure to stick around. You don't have to do anything. It will automatically redirect you to the right place. Third, as always, this stream is sponsored by Trade the Pool, the best prop firm out there. Huge pool of stocks. You can get up to 260K in buying power. This can really help you test your strategy. Uh, if you need to get over that 25K pattern day trader threshold, this might be your ticket. And on a special note, the uh, people that join us from Trade the Pool, Gil in the chat here, we thank you every day for helping us out, uh, Gil. And then Michael, who joined us yesterday with some banger plays. Turns out today is Michael's birthday. So Michael, happy birthday. Thank you very happy much birthday, for being a part of our show. There you go, 13, happy birthday as well. Um, or happy birthday from 13 is what I meant. So <laughs> Michael, happy birthday. Thank you very much. We look forward to having you back real soon. So let's get a round of applause for Michael and trade the pool. We really, really appreciate it. And let's get down to brass tacks on this market. So let's first discuss the SPY here. Um, we had the FOMC meeting yesterday. The initial reaction it dipped a little bit and then it went to the highs, intraday highs, pretty much went right up to the high after the open. And then we sold off all day. Now, the big takeaway here, at least for me, is I was kind of surprised by the market reaction because one of the things that I've been saying for a while is really don't think we're getting a rate cut in March. And Powell really kind of threw some cold water on that uh, yesterday, saying that um, he does not anticipate, wouldn't, wouldn't rule it out completely, but said he does not anticipate that. I think that was a little bit of reality coming back to the market. Um, now, 13, you watched the exact same thing that I did yesterday. What are your thoughts on what happened and maybe where we go from here? Yeah, there was. Uh, we've been talking a lot about how there's a big disconnect between uh, what is happening with rate cuts. Some people think that we're going to be raising rates. Some people think we're going to be cutting them early. The disconnect's been pretty, pretty uh, wide. And what I saw yesterday was a lot of uh, the realization that there might not be rate, uh, March cuts, uh, March cuts, rate cuts in March. Uh, we saw that unfold yesterday. We went through a uh, the 485 level in the SPY, which is what I've been looking at as a, a pretty strong support level. Now it's resistance. We're seeing that B resistance in the morning here. We're right up to that level right, right as, as I speak. But... Uh, as far as what uh, you know, this reaction, I, I don't know that we'll snap back up. It's entirely possible this market's going to do what it wants, and it's you know we've we've expected a, a downside when uh, when we started getting it, and only to have the market get bought right back up. We might just be seeing rotation into some other stocks for the time being until tech gets weak enough for them to rotate back in. So there's still a whole bunch of question marks. We need to see continued weakness if, in order to uh, say yeah, it looks like the top's in. Because I'm not sure if we don't uh, spike back up, but 485 right now is the level for me. We start closing above that, I think we probably could go back up. Okay, so we will keep an eye on that 485 line. Now, what makes this even more complicated today is you have arguably the biggest day of earnings after market today, as we're going to have. I believe it's Meta. Let me get my uh, graphic up here. I believe it. I know it's Apple. Big Mama reports tonight, uh, but I believe it's also yeah, it's Amazon, Meta, uh, also on deck here tonight. A couple others: uh, U.S. Steel, Coursera, 
uh, Microchip, Atlassian. So some of the other stocks that we've talked about, that's on deck for tonight. So it's going to be a big after hour session. I know everyone is awaiting those Apple earnings. On the downside, if we continue, uh, if we continue to the downside here, 480 absolutely looks to be a spot that's actually converging here with the 20 day moving average. So maybe we don't rock it right through it. Maybe we actually find some support there and get some type of long side trade. We'll see how some of the other stocks uh, react when the spy goes down to that level, if in fact it does. Um, okay, let's talk about some of the other stocks on deck here today. Uh, 13, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the movers tool and then I'm going to throw it over to you. And I would say at that point, we can take whatever stocks you want to take a look at and we'll go ahead and hit the chat as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that here. Flip over to my movers and we're going to take a look at the gappers. And guess what? We have a return of mini me. So Dr. Evil yesterday, uh, I don't know. They didn't didn't really take care of, of mini me. So mini me is back here today. I'm uh, not sure why I don't have a chart there. I was going to say, I just had one here a second ago. Um, mini me, you can see here, M I N M. I, I like the mini me so much, but I really should call it what the cooker is. M I N M here rocketing to new highs. We're actually just shy of 650. You can see we're actually extended away from the VWAP here. Uh, if we take a look at the news, I don't see anything fresh, right? This is just a continuation momentum move from yesterday. So uh, with that, in mind, keep in mind that these things can do pretty much whatever they want. Um, we've talked a lot about some of these smaller, quote unquote, junkier stocks, perhaps doing offerings and such. Uh, just again, focus on your entries, focus on your technical entries and exits uh, on the stock if you're going to end up trading this. 13, I know we'll be taking a look at this when we flip over uh, to the actual live trading as well. Um, next on the list here is going to be ELAB. This is ticker ELAB. I'm pretty sure that we've actually traded this one before. This is another one of those really small price stocks. This was a penny stock yesterday. Uh, we popped as high as 170 here today. We've pretty much bled back most of those gains. Um, we're beneath the VWAP. It does does look like it's holding right in here. So in accordance with some of the plays that we were doing yesterday, if you remember, Smoke Tuna was just absolutely on fire, grabbing some of these plays as they came in to the intraday bottoming level. And that allowed us to get some trades. We're actually two for two yesterday on the day trades, which is a great turnaround uh, from where we've been. So uh, I know that this is probably not the greatest company. Um, I'm certainly not holding this for the long term, but there might be uh, some action here today. When we take a look at the news feed here, I don't really see anything fresh. So again, same deal here, might be some technicals. Did you have it on this 13? It, it might be from the the uh patent news they had last week i think it was like uh january 24th when they when they had that that's really the only thing i can really see uh that would have uh yeah the they announced an issuance of uh, a patent i can see it on the wednesday january 24th mm -hmm. uh row there so that I, I don't know what else they could be moving on uh they have low float 4.93 uh, uh, million shares um other than that i don't know why, why this would be moving maybe it's just getting pushed around so Elab, this is going to be another one that we're going to take a look at here today. Let me keep moving through the list here. NRBO, this is another one. This is Neurobo Pharmaceuticals. Now, this one, not a great looking pre-market here, right? We had a huge pop on huge volume, went as high as 676, looks to be the high print there. We've come back in over two points. We've actually dipped beneath the VWAP. But again, just like on ELAB, let's see where and when this makes its intraday bottom and then see if it gets a trade, uh, gives a trade setup for us. No need to rush it, especially on these uh, junkier stocks that are really kind of pulling back with some ferocity. Now, if NRBO, we did have a catalyst here today. Neurobo Pharmaceutical announces FDA clearance. For, of IND for phase one clinical trial of DA1726 for the treatment of obesity. Now, this is important because you, if you recall, uh, obesity drugs have been in the news for months now and have caused some of the really big stocks like Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk to really, really move. So I'm not surprised to see an exaggerated reaction here in the pre-market after we're getting some type of PR about a treatment for obesity. Now, 13, we talked about a stock the other day. I can't remember the ticker, but it had phase three results. One of the things that you were saying is that in your experience, it seems that phase three is generally a sell the news catalyst. What do you think about phase one here? Um, it, it, maybe not as it pertains to this particular stock, but just in general. Well, this is just clearance for phase one trials. So they haven't even started yet. And the thing that's really concerning with me, as you pointed it out, uh, this is for obesity treatment. So they're coming up with a drug that's meant to compete with, that's going to end up competing with GLP drugs. Uh, 
I don't know about the long-term prospects, but that's not why we're trading it today. Uh, it's a good buzzword right now. It's got 3.27 uh, million share, uh, shares floated. They also just re uh, recently had a reverse split, uh, one for eight, on mm -hmm. the 21st of December. So it's starting, It's checking some of those boxes, too. This is going to be a trade. I would not want to hold this in the, for the long term. Uh, maybe when we start getting through some of those uh, uh, clinical trials, it'll probably provide some uh, other trades on volatility. But uh, long term, I, I don't. I don't know how this is going to compete with GLP drugs. Yeah, really good outlook there. And I would agree with you on the long term premise. I'm not sure how it's going to compete with GLP drugs, too. Maybe they, you know, have some PR or they fold in uh, some of that technology into this. I'm not sure, but I'm with you on that one. Short term only on this for sure. Um, OK, next on the list here is going to be a UVI. This is applied UV. I'm also pretty sure that we've traded this one here before. Uh, let me go ahead and flip over to the chart here. You can see we actually had two pops this morning. We had the initial impulse move. We had the corrective move right back down to balance or where it, where it moved from initially. And then we had a second impulse move. And this second impulse move has had the high volume uh, here this morning. Now, we've come back in here, but we've done a really good job not trading below the view app for very long we've actually traded above it we're holding above it now currently sitting at 310 vwap at 307 so we'll see if this can actually push off a lot is going to be due on the volume on this one too does the volume actually expand when the market opens 13 you were you were saying to me earlier with ninm is you i wish it would wait until the open to do this and yeah. the same thing here with with auvi right we had this really good pop in the pre-market but if it doesn't get that volume follow through in the regular session this might not be a suitable target for us it's, it's it's got uh, it did a reverse split on uh, the 12th of December and it uh, does have some well as a result of that reverse split it does have some decent short interest but I don't think that's uh, going to matter uh, because of, of of the reverse split it's, it's mm -hmm. that's the only reason why it's that high uh, so it's it's checking some of the boxes it could be you know volatile enough for trading but uh, I, the long term prospects on this appear to be better than that last company we we're talking about but it might be a while before this uh, this happens. There you uh, go. And and yeah. and by the way, on that last company here, Beach Bum Trading, phase one equals definitely a sell the news catalyst. Plus, watch out for an offering drop on pop, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, and that and you know what? We should keep saying these warnings because I know we get excited about a lot of these movers. We're always looking for different trades every single day. But it's important to keep in mind that it's, you know, it's not necessarily a black swan event every day, right? And some of these pops are likely going to get sold into. We really don't want people buying at the highs. Really want you to have a processed approach for trying to capture momentum, whether the momentum's legitimate or illegitimate. And that's kind of where we're at uh, and, with this right and, now. And Beach Bump Trading uh, brings up a great point about uh, watching out for uh, offerings. Because as soon as this, uh, the stock price starts rising like that, they get all like, okay, well, we need to fund the next trials. We need to, mm -hmm. you know, get cash uh, generated so we can you know, move forward with our clinical trials and get this drug to market. That's costly endeavor. They need to raise cash. So when the stock price runs, they're going to be like, now's our time. And they make those offerings. And they may already have them in the pipeline. So if, if you're going to be into these biotechs and you want to play uh, the, the different clinical uh, phases, pay attention to their filings because you, you'll, you'll get clues on when they're, split, they're expected to have those come out or uh, when they're expected to file. So... You can you can probably get some uh, breadcrumbs in there. Might, might be worth checking out if you're into biotechs uh, that that much. Absolutely. And Byron here, another good tip. AUVI has very little cash and a decent amount of debt. That's something else to watch out for. Crow here, our chat alert scanner already popping off here rev b offering i am going to go to plug next neville don't worry we are going to cover that here uh rev b this was a stock from uh yesterday that was just an absolute rocket i know 13 i'm pretty sure that you traded this to the upside off that first halt here yeah uh rev b here offering down 60 percent here this is exactly what we're just talking about right and jay rice uh credit to you you've been saying this a lot a lot of these smaller stocks when they pop when they have these huge moves look out for that offering that's what we're just talking about today here is an example of that happening now thankfully for us or for anyone that was trading this yesterday we actually got that offering uh, overnight or, or in the extended session so it didn't affect the intraday trading that's great but keep in mind that this is always always a possible outcome for some of these smaller stocks especially in the case like when with, with what uh brian is is bringing up here if the company has little cash and a lot of debt what do you think they're trying to do trying to make those payments, right? They're trying to pay that debt down. If they don't have cash and now all of a sudden their stock is ripping, what do you think they're going to do? 
they're going to do an offering and they're going to try to generate cash that way. So that's a really good call there. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to plug. I know we've got 10 minutes here. We are going to get to some more tickers here in the chat. Here is uh, plug. You can see we actually took five. Yesterday, we had a big, big run in plug. Actually had some really good volume. I wouldn't be shocked if plug was on traders list today based on yesterday's relative volume, right? This is definitely a stock that would have appeared in overnight scans for relative volume, likely going to be in play with a number of day traders here today. Plug is often day traded. I've actually been trading this stock, I think going all the way back to like 2015, uh, when there were grandiose visions about the hydrogen fuel cell and all of that stuff. So uh, plug power, good trader, very liquid, uh, gapping up here again today. Uh, let me check the news tab here. Easy. Uh, squeezing. Uh, we do have a news catalyst here. Plug Power completes first customer fill of liquid green hydrogen at its Georgia plant. Well, now that PR reads pretty well, right? We're talking about uh, green hydrogen. Just label it green and maybe the, the, we, we trade back up here. Uh, but in any case, uh, Plug Power there. Um, filling its first order or, com or uh, completing its first order, I beg your pardon, uh, also got a buy from uh, Craig Hallam here. So that is also uh, in the news feed here. Plug up 13.3%, definitely going to be on deck here today. Now, 13, I do have some more uh, stocks. Look at the short interest on that one. Take a look at the short interest on plug. Yeah. Bang, 26.36% short. That report was as of January 24th. Days to cover on this one, five. That is some pretty high short interest. Generally speaking, I, I when I look for high short interest stocks, I'm looking for a percent of float shorted above 20 and days to cover above five. If that days to cover can get to 10, better still. But yeah. here we are with plug still five days to cover and 26.36% of the float shorted here. 13, did you have any other stocks that you wanted me to pull up here real quick? <clears throat> well, I was just going to point out that there are some SPACs and IPOs that we may want to consider avoiding. Uh, they, I I don't think they're going to give us the greatest trades. And I could be wrong about that. But FBLG IPO'd yesterday. Uh, they're down today. Whether or not they come back, I don't know. Uh, it didn't look like it was getting a whole lot of movement in the morning. Maybe just a, a few uh, uh, bid-ups. Uh, we have NUBI, which is a SPAC. They're bringing Honeycomb Battery to market. And LGST, another SPAC, is bringing uh, Tevogen Bio to market. Uh, L Did you say LGST? Yes, sir. Uh, I, you know, I noticed those were moving in the, in the pre-market, so I took a look at them, realized they were uh, IPOs and SPACs. I, uh, I'm not sure I would uh, even consider these right now. I think there's other other better plays to consider right now. So if you're mm -hmm. looking at these, maybe, you know, take a, a second look. Uh, if you want to trade them, go for it. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't want to, uh, you know, talk you out of it, but it's, I don't think it's going to give us the, the volume that we're looking for in, in terms of uh, making some good trades, so. Okay. Maybe, maybe stick to some of these other ones that we've been discussing. Okay. Uh, one of the other stocks here on the good old SPAC attack says Crow. That was, uh, man, that was one of my favorite shows. Uh, that was, that's whole SPAC craze. That was a nutty time. Uh, 2021, that was a great time. Yeah, that was a great time. Chris Catchy did a really, really good job with that. We'll see if SPACs ever really kind of come back into favor, but that was, that was really awesome. Uh, another stock here on the list is going to be Etsy. You can see Etsy popping up to about 76 uh in terms of its point there, or in terms of its uh, price there, I beg your pardon. Uh, we do have a PR here this morning. Etsy announces the appointment of Mark Steinberg to its board of directors, and then also had a rumor. Now, keep in mind, by the way, for any of you that use Benzinga Pro, a little pro tip here that I've been using for years, got it from another trader. Uh, when you, whenever you have a rumor, okay, and, and if you click on any headline in pro, you'll be able to see the tags. This one's tagged under news and rumors. I highlight my rumors as like this pink, magenta, whatever color it appears to you, because it stands out in the news feed. So when I'm looking at things, I, I color my press releases to be brown. That reminds me of paper and trees. Press releases were traditionally released on paper. Uh, and then I color my rumors to be purple, and these help it stand out. So whenever I flip to a news feed, if there's an active rumor, as there is here on Etsy, I can uh, kind of react to that uh, right away. Um, we have Elliott Management looking to take a stake here. Etsy popping up 10% here in the pre-market. You can actually see, oh, let me reset that there real quick. You can actually see we made a high just shy of 76. We've come back in. Let's see if we reclaim the VWAP. Etsy definitely in play here today. Um, okay, uh, chat. 
Are there any other stocks that you would like to look at that I have not uh, brought up? I saw Jay mentioned Rumble, mentioned that all of the dips are being bought. This one, of course, I don't have a price quote for, so go figure. I'm going to have to come back to that when we get some more movement on that, uh, Jay, but I, I've been watching Rum too. No trade on it for me, unfortunately. Crow uh, also mentioned TVST. I think you meant TSVT. Uh, I screwed that up several times yesterday. Did I screw up reading it or let me see? T. VST. No, see, that, that's an easy one to, to mix up here. Uh, TSVT, this had a huge run yesterday. Uh, looks like we're holding some of those gains here today. We don't really have the volume that we did yesterday, but again, let's see what happens when the market actually opens. Uh, seeing more tickers come through the chat here. It is ticker time, baby, before we open five minutes till we open. Here's a look at DWAC. This has been a big trader for us. Um, over the past several weeks. Uh, 13, I believe yesterday you were looking for a move above 40 on DWAC. Am I getting that right? Uh, I, we did get a move above uh, DWAC. And I, I was looking for it intraday. And I, if we came back down, then it wouldn't surprise me. But this, thing, this thing's all over the place every day. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, you know, as, as uh, news comes out about, you know, and if everything that's going on with uh, Trump in a negative way, you know, with his lawsuits and everything that's going, uh, you know, his way in terms of uh, the election. So that's going to cause it to rise. So you're going to get a lot of volatility in that, uh, you know, probably throughout most of the uh, primaries, maybe even the general election. Uh, just depends on what the, the news is of the day. All right, let's keep rolling through there here. Uh, next stock being mentioned here in the chat, NXT. This is, of course, next Tracker here, Next Tracker shares trading higher after the company reported better than expected Q3 financial results. Uh, I'll be this. I appreciate Mohammed. I appreciate you bringing this here to the chat. This is not a stock that I trade uh, regularly at all. In fact, I'm not even sure that I have traded this here before. Um, interestingly enough, like like it said here, good earnings. We're popping here on Next Tracker. In fact, this is Next Tracker and its subsidiaries are a leading provider of intelligent integrated solar tracker and software solutions used in utility scale and distribution generation uh, generation solar projects around the world. So it looks uh, like this is a thing behind the thing yep. trade for solar. Um, interesting to see this pop here. Solar generally tied to interest rates. We were just told that interest rates aren't going to be cut. So we'll see where some of these solar uh, stocks go. This one, uh, having a good morning here. If we take a look at the daily chart, looks like we popped to all-time highs. Let's see where we go on ticker NXT. Mohammed, good mention here on this one. Good mention here on this one. Okay, next, Neville. Want to talk a look or ask me to take a look at SoFi? This is a stock also that we have been looking at a number of times here this week. SoFi. This was above. This is here. Here's the daily chart. You can see just recently this thing was above nine. This was almost making a run towards ten. We stopped just shy of nine fifty here. We're actually beneath eight now uh, here today on SoFi. You can see we actually took a leg lower yesterday. We're slowly grinding back up. Volume's not here yet. Again, big thing here with SoFi, I want to see what the volume tells us when the market actually opens. The other thing is I want to see how banks and other financial institutions react after uh, that Fed meeting yesterday. And I think we're going to learn some more about that here today. Well, we did get some news uh, from Financial Juice uh, about uh, Bank of America changes their first Fed rate cut forecast to June from March. And Barclays changed uh, their first Fed rate cut forecast from May to Mar uh, to May from March. So it seems like some of these uh, banks were anticipating a March cut, which isn't really, you know, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily good news. Yeah, uh, I don't it's, it's 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 very concerning because, it, it you know, we were having a discussion in, in happy hour chat about that. It, it seems as though the uh, uh, they might be hiding or, or not mentioning something that's going on behind the scenes. They're not letting on. To what uh, they, that they need or want these rate cuts, uh, they might be on the wrong side of the rates. So that's that's the concern I had. Really, uh, you know, getting that headline uh, is that there some banks are revising their uh, rate cut forecast to uh, later in the year uh, from March. So I like I'm with you, thirteen. I didn't know why anyone had that prediction in the first place. I mean, our happy hour show. Hats off to our happy hour show because pretty much everyone in there has been weeks ahead of these people on TV, and I mean weeks ahead of them. We've been talking about this for a long time. So, uh, real good, uh, real good stuff there. Uh, Lynn, good morning, Lynn. I'm sorry about the Predators loss yesterday. I actually flipped that game on after the Red Wings game, um, and I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you. I wanted to see your team pull out a win. So you'd be all happy here today. I'm sorry that they did not. You said that you are watching Kava here. Now, Kava reports in just under two weeks. This is actually Tuesday, February 13th, uh, two days after the Super Bowl here. So after that Monday hangover Five day. That, 
And uh, we're going to open in five seconds. Kava here looking like it's actually going to test these highs here and move higher. We'll see if that happens. Moving over to my scanner. We'll also get trade the pool up here so we can show you some executions on some of these trades. Figure out what's going on here. Oh, no. Okay. There, I guess we're going to trade the pool right now. All right. So we're open and MINM is taken off through seven. Next up, I have a 775. And it's getting a whole bunch of bids. I think we might even haul out the gate here. 721 high here? Yeah, it's going to halt. And there it is. There it is. There is your halt, M-I-N-M. So halt right out of the gate here on M-I-N-M. I don't know that I want to even try to play the halts on this one because of how much it's run up in the pre-market. It could be one of those things that just we, we come out of the halt and it just completely drops. Uh, I'm going to wait to see what happens with MINM. Okay. Now uh, another one that was on our list here, NRBO. Remember this one popped and really kind of came back in uh, looking like it's holding in here. Um, I, I know we don't have smoke tuna yet, or I haven't seen him, but looking at the chart here, sure looks like that MACD is starting to go green. And so are those signal lines. Maybe NRBO gets rolling here. We might take a stab at this one. What we can do here. See if we get filled at 420. We get uh DraftKings falling out of the uh falling out of bed out right at the open. Right ahead of the Super Bowl on cue. <laughs> it's got a little Looks bit like of size here in NRBO at 427. Um there's size at the 480 that I'm on. I didn't move this up because I saw this curling and I said to myself, you know what, Ryan, we really don't want to chase this. And RBO looks like this is running away from my buy order here. So if you guys hit this one, uh, congrats. And RBO looks like this is curving to the upside here. So we got a pop uh, in Bitcoin just moments before we opened. Uh, might be worth keeping some of these uh, Bitcoin names on your radar. Mara, uh, Riot, Matt, mm -hmm. uh, MSTR. Uh, CLSK. Bitcoin like holding at about 42,655 right now in those Bitcoin futures. Uh, NRBO, this uh, initial move here running away. I had the right idea, just uh, probably a little bit too slow, I think, here. We're going to go ahead and cancel this order. There goes DWAC. Oh, I need open orders, working orders. I clicked on the wrong tab. Well, thankfully, that didn't affect anything here. Okay, NRBO, nice pop back towards uh, the VWAP. We will reassess. We're going to try and not chase things and make stupid moves just because uh, things are moving around here. AUVI looks like that tried to pop right out of the open, immediately sank beneath the VWAP, but looks like it's holding its pre-market lows here. So we'll see if this can bounce back to the VWAP and clear. Uh, I, I may just be a little bit more careful at the open here. I, I, I post rate uh, decision. I'm just going to kind of wait and see what happens here this morning. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. And I think that's especially true on some of the uh, larger stocks that we trade here. Probably want to be careful on that one. Uh, you know what? I did want to take a look at Humana. Remember, we're still in that butterfly and a potential bounce up. Humana a little bit lower here today, but this trade's been working. Um, we're still up on that. DuPont was another butterfly I took. This one is not working. Uh, but but I'm actually still doing all right on DuPont so far. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the one I wanted to trade is salted. So <laughs> and I don't even know if it's going to keep going up. It might, but... Oh, man, uh, by the way, so Jay Wild, I, I think you're talking about NINM, correct? Jay Wild yeah. here mentioning NINM looking like a possible short. So we'll take a look at that when that it, actually opens here. It could It could very well be. And I'm, the other concern is that, well, these shorts are going to get absolutely clobbered if they try to short it. It's just been kind of a theme that's been happening where every every time we try to short something, the market come or the bulls come in and go, okay, bet. And they just absolutely uh, <laughs> did everything up. <laughs> CTVA, this is Cortiva. This popping here, this was earnings, wasn't this? I actually didn't cover this in the open here. Uh, CTVA. And race seems yep. to be moving too. That's Ferrari. They reported, was that was that yesterday? Let me see. I've got that on my chart here as well. Let me get that. They were moving up. in pre-market. They may have reported this morning. Yeah, uh, this they did. Was, yeah, it was this morning. Okay. 
Okay. So that's why that's if so if you're looking for something that uh you know trades over three hundred dollars, there you go. If you want to own part of Ferrari, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Ferrari uh, that's made big news this morning. Ferrari made big, big news this morning. Lewis Hamilton, uh, renowned F1 driver, uh, surprisingly, from what I understand, switched from Mercedes to Ferrari. So Scooter Ferrari team uh, getting a top driver here in the world for their F1 team. It'll be interesting to see how that shakes out uh, as well. I'm not sure if that's actually affecting the stock, um, but seems coincidental uh, given the news here this morning. Lewis Hamilton is very, very popular and I'm sure brings um, more potential revenue to their brand. Uh, if you're also looking for some larger cap names, uh, Qcom did report yesterday and look at Zim. Of... Look at Zim. Oh, I'm sorry yeah, for interrupting. Go. I'm sorry for it's interrupting okay. you, but uh, we talked about a 15 breakout here. We talked about I took gains, and that's all I had to do was to uncork it was take my gains. And now here we go. Uh, breakthrough 15 stopped. It looks like 1550. This thing is wild here. Uh, looks like several of you are actually trading this. Rick, congratulations if you're hitting this one. M I N M, is that open now? Looks like MINM yeah. is open. We popped higher and moved lower on these halts. This, this is one of the reasons why I don't like trading halted names, right? They are all over the place. You're seeing it in real time here, NINM. Let me know if anyone buys this flush. I mean, it's it's getting bit up. I mean, it, I think this, the shorts are getting squoze. Yeah, I think you might be right. Jane Smith saying NINM open, and my stop hit at 738. So I think you meant your limit order, nice. right? You traded that to the upside. That is... Time to ring the register this morning, baby. Let's go. I almost called you Baby Jane. That was a complete accident. So uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but in any case, get, straight trade here. Her husband's going to come knock on your door. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't need any of that. <laughs> okay, we, we, we don't need any of that stuff. Um, all right. Awesome trade there uh, right out of the gate. Um, and Plug. You run. guys, someone was asking about Plug earlier here. Plug was right around five. This actually looks like it's making a run at those pre-market highs. Uh, let's see if plug can actually take that out. I got that at 515, 516 or so. Rum is uh is still trying to push higher. It got up to uh, 759, kind of tr uh, trying to choose a direction. It's got some resistance at uh, 760, but if we punch through that, it could get going some more. Uh Jay Rice mentioning that uranium is ripping. That's uh URA here. Jay, you have been on uranium. You, I think. Of all of the people that I've seen connected to the market, Jay, you were on Uranium first. I, I don't know that I had anyone pounding the table on Uranium names before you. This has been a huge move, and it's not just been in Euro. There's been some of those other stocks as well. I think Quadruple U was one of them. I think LEU was one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm getting the ticker wrong. Uh, LEU. Uh, just just a great a great sector call there on Uranium. I know at this point you're probably trimming, right? There's no new positions being initiated on this move here yeah I, i'm just curious jay uh because i th thought i saw some news i don't remember which politician or which leader said that they were looking to uh do more investment in, in uh uranium but i if this is off uh that news from either this morning or yesterday great job great job being ready for that i i did i know i read something somewhere just recently so if you could point out where, where that came from that would be uh helpful to my peace of mind uh, Mike Miller also mentioning CCJ. Thank you, Mike. I can't even believe I forgot this one. When I trade uranium, CCJ is my primary target. In Etsy. fact, and when, when Jay first started doing this, that's what I was trading. Here is Etsy. Looks like we're trying to go higher here, break those yep. intraday highs. That sets us up for a potential pre-market high here. I've got that at just shy of 76. So 76 would be your next upside target here if we can break these intraday highs on Etsy. Uh, right. X, uh, EKS. I don't know if it's X or EKS, so I'm probably going to go back and forth. Mentioning QCOM here, this is another one that reported earnings. Um, Qualcomm here selling off out of the gate, but it does look like buyers are stepping in here. I pretty much mm -hmm. have only buying candles or, or uh, only green candles here. The interesting note about QCOM is we were higher. We were actually watching this in happy hour live, right? QCOM traded higher. One of the things we had a very, very sharp get uh, um, attendee ask, hey, what does it mean? What Does QCOM tell us anything about Apple? Right, because they're chips. Yeah. There was another member that talked about Skyworks, which was also uh, up yesterday. That's SKWS. Let's see where that is here today. Oh, SWKS Sky. Uh, why can't I ever get this? What is Skyworks ticker, folks? Bless it. I hate this. 
I always confuse these. I can never get it right. SWKS, for heaven's sake, Ryan. Here is Skyworks. So this had the exact same movement as QCOM, right? We popped initially. We came back in. We actually went lower uh, the, day, the day after. Q, and now we're moving lower here today. So if we flip back to QCOM, I know there's an extra day here uh, separating this earnings prints. First move here lower. We'll see if the bulls can buy this and take it positive here on QCOM. Just looking around for some entries. Man, Zim is just... I'm still holding some. It's not as much as I had before, but I'm just letting the rest ride. Uh, but, you know, to your point about that, you have been telling us quite a bit, Zim, this will move around, right? So if you don't get your fill initially, definitely don't chase. Kind of wait for that to kind of come back in. So given the move here, 13, do you have any new levels for Zim where you're looking at? Or are they still the same as you had before? Well, let's take a look here. Um, I think the only level that I'm really itching for it to get to is to fill that gap around 1606 that's where it starts so when we get over 16 i'm going to be interested to see if we end up filling that gap let me give you the accurate uh levels that i have for that okay in the meantime i'm going to roll through some of the other tickers we were looking at here's nrbo looks like crow is on this one nrbo this is a uh nice little curl uh right off the bottom we call that the smoke tuna setup. I mean, it might as well, right? We moved back up to the VWEP. We actually did do some uh, testing right there. It took uh, the third candle to break through, but here we go. Now we're pushing through high at new highs here, 509, 510 on NRBO. So this one here moving. Uh, yeah, for Zim, the uh, the gap fill is going to be between 1606 and 1736. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jay Rice trimming some of his uranium move that he's been telegraphing here. We'll give you a register ring for that one. Looks like uh, MINM is starting to get some more weakness. Might be coming in. Uh, I'm going to see if it can hold the seven or 620 area. And if it does, I'll, I'll, I might consider uh, taking a stab at that. <clears throat> this does look a little bit heavy with some of those top wicks out of the open after mm -hmm. that big pre-market run here. Richard, double dip and going back to the well, buying New, uh, New York Community Bank Corp, ticker NYCB here. This plunging, Richard, I know you made money on this trade yesterday. Um, just be careful on it today. Make sure that you have a plan in case this does not turn around to the upside. Nothing but red candles here this morning on both the volume and the price chart. Selling pressure high on NYCB. Doesn't mean that it's wrong, Richard. Sometimes the best buys are the ones where you hold your nose and buy, and then bang, it bounces right back. So... Uh, just be careful with this one. Uh, NYCB, maybe, maybe this is bottoming. Let's see. It looks like this is under yesterday's lows, but not quite under the impulse move low from the initial move. So I thought you were talking about Judge for a second. I was like, oh, he'll be fine. He traded Mark. <laughs> We've got a couple of Richards showing up here now. <laughs> yeah. Pro saying Elab has probably reached its bottom. Let's Looks like look. maybe that is the case. Elab penny stock here, 86 cents. I'm going to pass on Elab. Am I and M halted? <laughs> halted is to, it the halt downside. to the downside. So we, okay. Yeah, we cracked through that VWAP, halted to the downside here. Okay, that's fine. We'll get more opportunities with that, I'm sure. Probably get overselling out of that halt. Yeah, everything that this it's not looking not looking like there's too many good entries in some of these everybody anybody else uh finding some entries yeah, in some of these things i'm with you there joe i'm also struggling on finding some some new uh good quality setups here nrbo probably the best one of the day just straight up missed it veru is a penny stock that's taken off i'm not going to trade this but veru uh just had a nice pop this is a blast from the past, right? Veru, we used to trade this when so. this was six to 11 bucks. Yeah, it was a Veru good time, you could even say. Uh, we, def <laughs> we definitely traded this one a lot. Not such great times anymore as it went from $11 to 53 cents. Yikes. Just goes to show you, though, you, you could still make money off of them if, if they're moving. They're not all long-term holds. Uh, Align Technology here, ticker ALGN, reported good earnings yesterday. Uh, Definitely seeing some profit taken here today. Maybe we'll bottom out here around 285. We'll see. It looks like it's trying to do that at the moment. 
since we have uh, DWAC going, oh, yep, sure enough, fun is having fun times. That P H U N? Yes, sir. Fun, yep. Evax, uh, nice little move there. Good call. Good morning, if uh, Gregory. If you haven't been trading with us, uh, we whenever we watch DWAC, we tend to take a look at fun too. They like to run together. Absolutely, they do fun. We call it the uh, penny proxy of DWAC, right? Yeah. This is the stock that is the penny stock that seems to move along with it. Oh, looks like I nods yeah. back up to over 11. All right, excellent. Why don't you give me that $12, $13 so I can actually ring my own register here? That's what I would absolutely love. I missed my opportunity to pick up more when it was under 10. It's okay though. That was a good I've trade. got a feeling we've got some time on this. I I I, I really do. I, I I have a little bit right now. So if it goes absolutely buck wild, I'm you know I'm gonna have some exposure. But I think we might have an, another opportunity to reload, especially if we do get some type of uh, larger sell off here. That's right, Big Bill. You know it. And it's exactly it. Same same thesis on fun as DWAC, right? All tied to the Trump campaign. Uh, you're gonna see. Uh, all different kinds of headlines and back and forth with that. These stocks definitely move on it. Uh, generally speaking, I don't trade them, but if the setup's there, we'll take yeah. a look at it. Oh, I've traded DWAC. I had some good trades, some bad trades. It's just very, very spready. So it, you you really do have to uh, make it make a, a conscious decision if you're going to get in, in that and where you want to be out and where you want to set your stop at. CMND, this is Clear Mind Medicine here. This uh, reclaimed its VWAP and is pushing higher. It's actually going for those pre-market highs here. I've got that up at about 190. I do see some size here at 195 and 188. Uh, Lynn, good call. Uh, you also take a look at Rumble, uh, given what's going on with some, uh, with some of the action there in DWAC, also taking a look at Rumble for potential trades. Always good to have a list of other stocks that you can trade when some type of catalyst or some type of movement takes place there. So a uh, good shout there on Rum. Yeah, CMND looks interesting. If, in the next uh, five minutes or so, there, it could get maybe even later than that. It could get even more interesting. Uh, if we can keep with the volume and get these moving averages across DWAP, then a uh, break of 190 would be great. Yeah, I think like CMND has got a good setup. I may consider doing that one. I'd like this closer to the VWAP. We are about 10 cents away. Mm -hmm. we're about 10 cents away from that it's just the volume's kind of like it, it needs to pick up a bit but it, it's got a it's got a pretty decent setup in my opinion what else oh, it looks like minm mini me is back open mini me let's go it's uh okay so right back to the vwap let's see if it's got the strength to move above yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try a little bit because I this is a, close to where I wanted it to pick some up, so I'm gonna take a stab here. Okay. Misery loves company, so I'm gonna go with you. <laughs> uh, stop here. Gonna be what six? That low a day. We break that six thirty three is what I have that at. Six thirty is the low of day, so let's get this set up here. Six twenty-eight. Well, there goes uh, CMND. That one's working 29. so far. All right. Oh, Mike, it stopped out on this thing. Yeah, I was at that uh, yep. around six twenty-eight. Yep. Well, <laughs> good luck, Joe. I am out. Small loss there. A little bit of a paper cut. Yeah, so I'm right gonna uh, I'm gonna set my stop under six. Okay, so you have a little bit longer leash there. Probably mm -hmm. smart. One of the things that I've been struggling with is has been some of those uh, tight stops. By the way, seeing DWAC calls crossing the tape here now. DWAC moving yeah. to the lows here now. Uh, 39 next here on DWAC. If it goes, looks like it's trying to bounce there. D that is interesting, though. Those were, yeah, those were calls. DWAC calls coming in. Hmm. Well, so far as... Uh CCJ CMN. calls coming in, by the way. Sorry. CMND is working out really well, uh, but that other one uh, did not, that I just was in with you. Yeah, uh, Mini-Me. Yeah, Mini-Me. That one didn't work. Uh, uh, CMND did. Uh, EVAX halted. E EVAX halted. Yeah, that was, that was great. That was a nice move through that 190. Took off those pre-market highs uh, at 190, pushing up here. 210 has some size here. Great trade yeah. on this one, Joe. Thanks. Great trade on that one. 
I might even go again if it pulls back under two. It's doing that now. I'm going to go in a little bit smaller here at under two. Nice job using your profits to roll it through to the next trade. Okay, All right, fine. folks, and just as a reminder, uh, two all accesses today, two all accesses today. Um, Jam packed show. Zunaid uh, is going to be interviewing Dr. Howard Berman, the CEO of Koya Therapeutics. That's coming up here in five minutes. But what's different about this is that we are coming back after that interview. So don't go anywhere. Enjoy Zunaid's excellent interviewing skills and his crisp haircut. And we'll be back here to do some more trading when he is done so that's going to get started here in about five minutes but we will be back folks we will be back until then let's see what we can get here on cnmd did you ever get another fill uh which one on cmnd the when it dropped oh, below now. two now it's pushing higher here 215 yeah. 214 215 yeah i wasn't sure about that size there it looked like it could have taken it out and it did but uh, i i took a about five cents scalp uh when it was starting to go sideways so, but oh, look at this! <laughs> uh, it is really been nicer if I stayed in, but uh, you know, I already got that first candle, so I'm happy with it. You know what we're gonna give you? Thirteen. What's that? A register yeah. ring for that profitable trade. I understand you didn't hit the highs. That's okay. Oh, wow, look at Evax. Uh, that got halted to the downside after it uh, reached uh, five point nine. Yeah, let me pull that up here. <laughs> EKS to the moon, Alice. Uh, Jay, <laughs> this is actually, I, I, I'm rather amused by this comment here, Jay. Uh, Piton, stick on bike, joining camera on stick. <laughs> this is, of course, G-Pro. <laughs> so uh, some big, big, big moves in these when they were popular and trendy, but uh, those moves has since subsided. Speaking of big moves, uh, race, Ferrari, that's, uh, that's going now, and it might even, I mean, dare I say go to 400? I don't know if it will, but it, it's... Got the momentum at the moment. Enough buyers come in and want to buy this three hundred eighty-three dollars stock. It could uh, end up going up higher. But yeah, looks like Bitcoin is still rising. Take a look at what Mara's doing. Yeah, today. Bitcoin is uh, looking like it's going to try and take forty-three thousand here on Bitcoin. We'll see. Yeah, so those uh, Bitcoin plays definitely something to take uh, into consideration. CMD still trying to go further. Got up to 225. Arrow looks like this is going to try to go higher here on a bust of 1830. Don't like those uh, long looks at the top there. What are we looking at, everybody? Gil? Etsy's yeah, still moving above 73 here. I guess I don't have that one. Yeah, I don't have Gil either. This looks like a bunch of spammers. Yeah, hang on, let me take care of that. And my NM starting to recover. Now I wish I had set a lower stop. But, you bring know. up NINM. Wish in one hand, right? Ferrari came back in a bit. Etsy back to VWAP, or at least touched it. All right, looks like uh, MINM is really wanting to make its next move. Uh, 675 is the next uh, level I have above this one. And CMND has really come in. That's why I was trading it small in that uh, second candle. 
All right, folks, we are just about to do uh, the first all access here. So I am going to bring on Zunaid when Zunaid is ready. Zunaid, how you doing, my dude? I'm good. How are you? We're doing good, man. We're having a good time here. Uh, I'm really excited for your interview. You ready? You want to tell us about it a little bit? Yeah, we've got Koya Therapeutics. We've had them on before, and it's always been a great conversation. They recently had some news. I'd rather let the CEO, the doctor Absolutely. himself, go ahead and tell us about it. But uh, what's been going on? You, you, tra you, you know, what's what's been profitable for you today? Um, well, today, actually, I'm 0 for 1 on the day trades here. We're kind of waiting out to see what the reaction from the Fed is going to be. But um, 13, you hit M-I-N-N -M today? What, what was the – you hit one? I, I hit two today. Uh, CMND, that one worked really well. Uh, M-I-N-N, -M, that one didn't work so well. I guess I, if I had my stop lower, it probably would have because look at it now. It's, uh, it's trying to recover. Uh, but that level that I was looking at around uh, 620 – that's where I thought there would be a good entry, and uh, that's where most of the bodies of those uh, last two five-minute candles have been. So I just needed needed to not have my stop up so high. I like the jacket, by the way, 13. It's oh, a, yeah. You it's like a it. nice, spiffy-looking jacket. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I want it. I want it. Oh, you want it. Was that one of your prizes for winning the fantasy league? Yes, it was. Let's go, dude. You want uh, fantasy Oh, no, no, no. Oh, not for the fantasy league. No, oh, I, haven't won, trivia? I haven't won a fantasy league yet. Yeah, it was trivia. Very cool. My bad. I like that. Zunaid, we're going to get out of your hair and let you take care of this interview, but we'll be back as soon as you're done. Yeah, sounds good. And we'll start all access here in a minute. Uh, Dr. Berman, you just give me things off. You're good. You're good. You can leave. You can leave. You're good. You're good. <laughs> no, I know. I I, I removed happened? you instead of myself. Good luck. Oh, that's always nice. I, I like being removed forcefully. Uh, but, Doc, just give me a thumbs up when you're ready and we can go ahead and kick things off. Awesome. Just give me a minute here. But, chat. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to have an all access for about the next 10 minutes or so. We'll have some great conversations. You can see the ticker on your screen as well. And then we'll go ahead and get back to some live trading. And then we'll end the show with some all access as well. But I will give you a little teaser before we go ahead and start all access. We're working behind the scenes to get you guys some more trading shows as well. So give us about a week or so. We'll announce the new shows and you know new hosts and different things like that as well. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, great things coming. Obviously, Ryan and 13 will stay here. We're talking about additional shows that might go on till about 1 p.m. and all that good stuff here as well. But let's talk about the conversation that we're going to have here today. You know, something that we love to do here at Benzinga is talk to executives from publicly traded companies. And that's exactly what we're going to do here in the next minute. We've got CEO Dr. Howard Berman for Koya Therapeutics. Ticker on the NASDAQ is C-O-Y-A. All access starts right now. Dr. Berman, good morning. Thank you for joining me. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm glad we can have a conversation again. I know it's been a minute. So if you could give us a refresher, explain it to me like I'm five. What is it that Koya Therapeutics does? Sure. We're developing biologic therapeutics that treat neurodegenerative diseases, and we target inflammation. I think what makes us very unique is that we use combination ther immunotherapies and we've uh, tested this in already in a number of patients in ALS and in Alzheimer's disease, and the results are quite striking in terms of being able to stop the progression in our early studies. And now we're pushing forward very quickly to move into a, a double-blind randomized trial. So we're moving quickly, and we've uh, had a great 2023. And I know you have um, a little bit of news that came out, but I'm curious to know about if you could define... Uh, Trex for us and elaborate on the significance of the regulatory T cells in treating these diseases. So T regs are a type of cell, regulatory T cells. They are the sort of the master regulators of inflammation. So when T regs aren't working properly, they're dysfunctional, inflammation goes up. And that's very bad in these uh, neurodegenerative diseases. We're sort of leading the field in understanding how these T regs work in these conditions. And I can tell you that. Uh, the drugs that we have and that we put together are really good in propping up those Tregs in the blood and making sure that they stay functional for a long period of time. And that's what we think is a key in terms of slowing or stopping these diseases. Now, let's go ahead and move on to ALS in the sense that I know your company has been working on Koya 302, uh, which is therapy initially aimed at treating 
ALS. Any key findings there, whether it's in the trials or any progression that you have, especially with the T-Rex that you just mentioned? Right. So again, I, I want to state that these, these are complex diseases and much like in oncology and in viral disease, where combination therapy is really where the future that patients are now living a long time, same goes for these uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So we're using these combination biologics. We're putting these into, we've already put these into patients and in, in a cohort of patients that we ran who were progressing pretty quickly, what we saw is after four weeks, the patients stopped progression and they stayed, they stayed stable for a long period of time over the course of treatment. So that's a very uh, important finding. When we measured their blood and we looked at the different markers, we saw that the markers went down in terms of the inflammation and the oxidative stress and the Tregs went up. So all of the features that you wanna, you wanna see were there and that's ex very exciting. We also have some data in Alzheimer's disease, which is of course a very big uh, uh, yeah. issue. And uh, what we've done is we've tested it in a, a cohort of eight patients and we showed that in fact, patients do better. They do better, the cognitive function improved. And moreover, the, uh, the Gates Foundation saw this data and they've now funded a large, uh, a, a double blind randomized trial and that data should read out this summer. I believe you've also got something in the works with Parkinson's disease with Koya 302 as well, correct? Uh, Parkinson's disease and a disease called frontotemporal dementia. So we look at Koya 302 as a, as they say, a pipeline in an asset. So we think that it can treat multiple indications. We started with, with ALS. We're, we're now moving to FTD, frontotemporal dementia. Bruce yeah. Willis has that, by the way. And then, of course, Parkinson's disease. And there's other conditions, but where these are the, the top three. And I know you're working with Dr. Reddy's laboratories as well. I'm interested in the fact of how agreements are working with other countries. So not just the United States, but also Canada, the EU, the UK, because obviously, unfortunately, people deal with this around the world as well. Where are we at in terms of that for trials and any other regulatory approvals? Yeah. Well, what's amazing is Dr. Reddy's, you may know, they're an Indian generic company, multi-billion dollar company. And what what people don't know is that they're now branching into biologics and branded therapeutics, and they're moving into a much bigger arena. So they signed a deal with us last year for over $700 million in, in gross uh, deal terms. And that was a transformative deal for Koya. They've taken the rights for ALS, only ALS for the United States and for Europe. And uh, Koya retains other rights in terms of Japan and other countries. So that's a, We've joined hands with uh, Dr. Reddy's. They're very financially uh, capable, and we, we're very proud to have them as partners. It leaves us also the opportunities to develop FTD and Parkinson's by ourselves if we want, or as we're having numerous discussions, consider collaborations in FTD, Parkinson's, and other disorders. So this is a sort of a pipeline in terms of uh, other strategic uh, opportunities that arise that will arise in 2024. Yeah, that's definitely a great partnership to have, especially when it's a proven record of what they've been able to do. We talked about 302. Let's talk about Koya 301. Tell us a little bit about that and what it's supposed to help with. Yeah. So 301 is the low-dose IL-2. It's the one of the components of 302, right? So that is a, a function of enhancing the Tregs. The low-dose IL-2 component increases the number and enhances the function in the body in a well-tolerated manner. It's a low dose format, so we don't anticipate any, any issues in terms of side effects and toxicity. And that is uh, a drug that we look to be an adjuvant, when I say adjuvant, in combination with many other drugs, like we've done with Dr. Reddy's beta cell, CTLA-4. So we look at it as, as a, a future platform to combine it with many other drugs with many other companies. Uh, we, we are doing this trial in Alzheimer's disease with low-dose IL-2 by itself, and uh, we'll wait for that data this summer. But again, we anticipate that the com combination therapeutics are the future of uh, treating neurodegenerative conditions, and low-dose IL-2 serves as that, that mantelpiece, if you will. Yeah, it's kind of like attacking different situations with different types of doses based on what the needs might be. Last one for me, and then we'll wrap things up. When it comes to Koya Therapeutics and the approach that you have in the current landscape, when it comes to biotech or pharmaceuticals, where do you feel like you have the advantage over your competitors? Well, in neurodegenerative conditions, we're 
we're targeting multiple pathways and we're combination biologics and we're sort of leading the field in that arena. We're also in the Treg space, one of the only companies that are targeting neurodegeneration. Most other Treg companies are, are focused on uh, the autoimmune condition. And lastly, we're the experts in neurodegenerative diseases. We have some of the top leadership. We have people who have taken blockbuster drugs into the clinic. We've got uh, the leaders on um, the thought leaders in neurodegeneration and the people who discovered Tregs are on our company. So I really think that we're, um, we're, we're in front. Plus we have a balance sheet now with the deal with Dr. Reddy's that are just gonna take us into 2026. So we're very, we're well capitalized and uh, we have eye, our eyesight now on additional capital in terms of the milestones from Dr. Reddy's. So I think the future is very bright in terms of where we are and where we're trading. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's not cheap to do what you guys are looking to accomplish and what you already have. So I'm glad the balance sheet is looking pretty for you there. But thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to more conversations as more news comes out. Thank you. You Absolutely. too. Absolutely. And that is Dr. Howard Berman, CEO of Koya Therapeutics, ticker on the NASDAQ is C O Y A. And chat, we appreciate you for hanging out. Let's go ahead and bring up the gang uh, one more time, Aaron. See, this is, why, this is why if things go slow, I can just blame Aaron. See, what happened there is Ryan's trying to bring himself on. Aaron's trying to bring Ryan on. And therefore, they just keep putting each other back and forth. I don't even have to know what's happening. I can just tell what's happening because we've all done it. We've all done it. Look, we've all had to be makeshift producers at some point. Uh, all jokes aside, the, uh, though, Zunaid, uh, great interview. Um, appreciate you, appreciate thanks, Dr. Berman, for coming on and letting us know. Uh, we're always looking to try to provide as much information directly from the source as possible. Great job, Zunaid. I absolutely appreciate you. Uh, we we can talk some stocks here. Let me let me share my screen if you guys want me to. Hey, I'd love to see before. what Zuzu is looking at today. Let's do it, Zune. Yeah, I saw that. It was funny. I was like doing the interview, and then I saw the comment. Who was it? Was it Judge? Somebody said. Somebody Quantum. said Zuzu. Quantum. Quantum. I was like, that's cute. I should send that to the bosses and be like, see, they love me. It's called. I'm you know, ready for some financial Zune. Some fun. Well, so I mean, I traded here. What did I trade earlier? Today? Where did it go? That's there we go. Finzu, financial Zunaid. Finzu. Fin Let's go. Ooh, ooh, I like that. <laughs> Let's go. I like that. Might need to get a t-shirt out of that one. Let's go. Um, <laughs> the only thing I traded was uh the the Nasdaq futures right off of this little trend line earlier. Um, uh, but that's the only thing I've got. Nothing else really for me so far. Been kind of a quiet, quiet day outside of that. We so were you, watching you guys let me know. We were watching NRBO and we were also watching NINM, which we have affectionately nicknamed Mini Me. That makes so sense. So NRBO, actually, this is still in play here. It's really kind of hugging along the VWAP. The only thing to watch out for here, if we knife away from that VWAP, that's going to have to stop you out. So I'd be looking at for a trade here. I'm not in this yet. Um, it's looking to push away from the view app. I'd be looking at maybe 450 on the downside here uh, and then hope for a move closer to six, maybe even 650 on the upside. NRBO. Yeah, if the 15 minute for me closed above five bucks, I would I would be interested in this one. And like you said, the stop loss for me would be the break of about 450 or so. I know a few days ago, this one was going crazy. Let's see where it's at. Any oh, good old good old Nexty, dude. We were trading that one a whole lot. Yeah. So yeah. you can see now 15 is resistance on this, which is the previous close. We know we love that. So we'll see where this one goes. I'm in here. Let's see what we got. I'm in Baba to go down and Google to go up for the next two weeks. So what do we think? Well, I can tell you what. I mean, you know, let, let's see. You said Baba and what? Here, let's go. Baba, Baba and Google. Google. I'm going to start with Baba here. I want to remind sure. you that we're coming up to the Chinese New Year. And uh, the Chinese market is going to be closed for an extended period of time. I actually think it's close to two weeks. Isn't it 13? Check me on that. Yeah, I believe it's from uh, the uh, 8th to the 19th. So about 11 days. Yeah. But yep, just just shy of two weeks. So keep that in mind for Baba. You, The Chinese market is going to be closed. Now, I don't know what that's going to do to the stock here, but keep that in mind if you're going to trade Baba. Now, Google, on the other hand, that's just going to move with tech. Right. So do we find do we find that people are kind of going back to tech or do we have a longer, a prolonged sell off? Well, with Google, we came down to close to the 50 day SMA. Uh, this sell off that we had probably could rebound. Uh, it's traded uh, yesterday between the 20 and 50 day SMAs. And now we're having an inside candle today. Uh, the, the concern I would have with Google is that we bear flag and then go down further. 
Uh, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but that's the pattern that we could see taking shape. Uh, we want, what we do want to see is uh, getting over this candle we created yesterday and getting back above the 20-day uh, uh, SMA. We can start to gap fill if we do that. Uh, on Baba, I know they said they've got two weeks out. So you've got earnings on Baba. So, I mean, you've got to check your risk tolerance in terms of that and see how you want to play it. So with earnings coming up, I don't think you're going to see a lot of movement to the upside or downside. Now, again, that is about what, seven to 10 days away. Did I say the seventh? I did say the seventh. So you're about a week away from that. So your, your contract should increase in IV ideally. Um, and you're kind of right near where I had support and resistance drawn on Baba. So you're, you're kind of right in the middle of it, to be honest. I'm not sure how I would play it if I was in your shoes. And let's go ahead and check out the other one. What was that, Google? Yeah. Let's check out Google. Now, I'll say this. Just looking at the chart that you have pulled up, Zuned, that to me looks like if there is any type of buying interest in Google, you're going to have a pretty substantial gap fill trade there. We're looking at what, almost 13 points or so? 155 looks to be the top, close to it, 154 maybe? Yep, so here we go. You got it about 151 according to this, 151.16. And of course, that starts playing if you get the break of 144 to the upside. Yeah, nice good $7 uh, yeah. trade there. Yeah. So you could you could try to play that one if it does go ahead and move to the upside. But they said Baba wanting to go down, Google going up. Yeah, so if you want it to go up, you've got to go ahead and break 144 uh, and then try to move to the upside because you just had earnings Absolutely. to the downside. Um, let's see what else we've got here. The thing that I'm looking uh, that I'm watching with uh, the China names is whether or not they're going to do stimulus ahead of the mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Lunar New Year. That would uh, you know destroy the downside of Baba. It would, it would take it up. It would take a, 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 probably all the Chinese stocks up. Uh, so, and, and that might come before the new lunar new year might come after, but during that lunar new year, there won't be any, uh, much, there's going to be a lot less trading mm -hmm. in our market as well. Let's see. Give me a sec. That's and I was actually looking at NRBO here. Let me see if I can, we got, I got to yeah. figure out which layout this is Zunaid. So just give me one sec right here. Bang. And then this, nope, nope. There, you go. there we go. So here is NRBO. This is one that we talked about. It did look like it was trying to curl up away from the VWAP. It's stopped. So I'd be very, very careful with this. I'd make sure that your entry is as tight as it can be to that VWAP. You'll notice on this most recent candle, let me see if I can zoom in and make this a little bit more clear. You'll notice on this candle where we were trying to extend this little like trade up or this little curl, we actually flushed back to the VWAP. Now we went beneath it slightly, but got bought right back above it. So I would try on an entry here to be as close to that VWAP as possible on the NRBO. This might still go really going to need some volume to flow in here to give us the trade that we need though. Like the stream for Finzu. Absolutely. <laughs> I didn't write that. That's either AT no, or Alyssa oh, in the oh, back. Oh, oh, that's, produ that's producer Alyssa back there. Just having a little bit of fun. See, AT said, AC just showed us his webcam. He said he didn't do it. Uh, taking a look at Meta, you've got a little bit of a resistance at the 472 level. Now it's at VWAP at around 398.50s. Interested to see how that'll behave because that does have relative strength according, you know, in terms of the market. Uh, GRI here, nice mention, Bex. This is moving here already. GRI looks like this was a, a nice move right through that pre-market high at 193. This thing printing 341. Um, this is the volume expansion that I talk about every single day. Um, missed this one. This is on my scanner now, so shame on me for well, it's just caught up in Google, right? Caught up in Google. GRI trading back up. Looks like four is a potential here on ticker GRI. This is GRI Bio. Not a company I'm familiar with. Race trying to make new intraday highs. GRI halted. Zunaid, have you ever traded Ferrari race, ticker race? I don't think so. I don't our, believe so. NRBO like, that you were just talking about is starting to get, uh, starting to move up some more. Here we go. Let's see if we can break this to the upside here. Or do we flush back down to the VWAP NRBO? All right, I'm going to see if I can get a fill around. 502s. I got a little bit of size here at 520, but if that keeps mm -hmm. moving up, that can get chomped easily. 530, your intraday high there. 
Here you go. Coming right back down to that 502. I think I just heard your fills, Zuned. Oh, that's for, I forgot. Yes, uh, you are correct. I've got 300 shares at 502. Stop loss for me is going to be the break of 450s. see if we can take this out here on nrbo really been kind of waiting for this nice to see oh, that volume it's coming in they brought a bid there we go it's breaking Zunaid, 520 it's a good spot there on that 502 appreciate entry you. appreciate you appreciate you now we just got it so my take profit is around 552 or so which is about 10 go. cents away bang come bang on. bangs you come made on. come on here let me throw uh oh you got you already got it never mind we're good we're good i, I got you i got you Come on. So I want to see, see I want to see a flood of likes for Finzu if this pops in the bills for him <laughs> to the upside. I, I'm well, not what's, kidding. <laughs> what's, what's cool is you've got you've got the uh pre-market highs at like 670. So this this has a long way to go to the upside. It's just a matter of do they try to flush it or if buyers hold on to this and try to squeeze them out and they're right back down. 6 oh, plus. I mean, look, I'm over. not I'm not mad at it. Yeah, and, and and to your point there about those pre-market highs, you made the range is in your favor, right? There, the, yeah. the range has clearly been carved out for this trade for you. Absolutely. Um, uh, even on that pull there, we did a really good job holding five. Maybe this sets up for another up move here. Yeah, I don't. It might not be over yet. I think it needs to get uh, a breakdown below VWAP, and then I'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, it looks looks like it might be done for now. Come on, you somebody, got somebody, somebody, just you know, tweet something. There's just that little bit of size there at 535. And honestly, I think if that falls, you probably pop right through that 540 intraday high. Let's see if it's got the strength. Volume still looking pretty good here. A minute 17 till this candle closes. We're pretty much at the volume we were at in the last three minute window. We are equal here. So this should be a higher volume candle. Come, Come on. on. And of course, you'll hear my notifications if we do get filled <laughs> oh mara came in coming back i'm looking at other stuff mara's coming back in mini me got the uh, hit punted i guess i appreciate that crow i appreciate you and your your seven figure account just 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 hit the just hit the, so there we go do you hear it there you go bang there it is all right. There it Money. is. Smash Money. up the likes for Finzu. We gave Money. you that trade live here. Nice job. Finzu Money. just going from interviewee to <laughs> trader just at like the drop of the hat. How many hats do you have stacked on top of that fresh haircut? You know what? Listen, I, I'm actually getting a haircut tomorrow, so I'm excited for it. You know, we've got it's... we've got date night. So if anyone has suggestions for date nights, let me know. I've tried Googling it because now we're like, you know, we've done like the dinner, we've done a comedy show, we've done things. So it's like now I need to get creative, you know. E Don't look to me for hair. hair Esports e venue, dude. What, what's the matter with you? Esports. <laughs> let me show. Let me show you where I nerd out. <laughs> All right, but there is a pop though. Now you've got a crack of about five sixties. Great trade, by the way. Great, great, uh, great, yeah. great job identifying this one. And you know what? Uh, just being patient, right? Like this entire area where we dipped back to the VWAP and we traded right around it. We yeah. don't need to be in this for this. We we can no. wait until we get those clear signals. Just an excellent job here trading. Market. Yeah, absolutely. And then wouldn't be surprised if we do get a pullback. But so far, the volume's kind of stepped up, obviously. Um, but it's just the wicks are just insane on this. Like, I mean, the spread's about nine cents, give or take. So you really got to make sure you have your limits set just in case it wicks to the upside. Uh, that's that's how I was able to capture the profit is just having it wicked. It was a really good uh, point entering uh, the past five minutes. There, we were getting a, a VMA cross and VWAP. That was a pretty good signal to to, to do that trade. Let me see if I can bring that up here for you, 13. Sure. Yeah, if you need me to add an email on mine, I can. Yeah, I, I actually think I have a window set up for what he's trying to do. So let me see if I can bring that up here. NRBO. I got to get NRBO up here first, though. NRBO. It's interesting how Mara is getting smacked down, yet Bitcoin is still rising.
Yeah, that came from like what 30s? I think it was high. I think I was looking at the chart like last week on it. Yeah, there you go. 30s all the way down. If I was trying to get back in this one, I'd wait for 20s to go ahead and break again. 20 the 20 came Bitcoin? Oh no, no, no. Sorry. On uh Marathon Digital, twenty dollars oh, gotcha. to the upside. Uh BTC, I haven't really. Oh, I forgot it's I had just, Doge. It's just been ripping <laughs> this morning. I, Bitcoin. I, I actually might still have some Dogecoin. Yeah, I gotta check. Okay, all right. Let's see what we got. Coinbase. I do RPO. not. I do not have those uh, EMAs for him. Sorry about that. Okay. I can put it up if you'd like. Um, yeah, I just gotta figure out. See, we've got so many different scenes here now. Let me let me do this. What 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 I've what I've done, uh, Ryan? If you want to do it on um, here. Uh, Pro, I've uh, got a. a Moving average there. multiple. What's uh, the what ticker? Sorry, NRBO. And then what's the EMA we're looking for? I, I, I would, I'm using nine and fifteen uh, for the moment, crossing VWAP. So if you have those three up, then you'll you'll see the move I was looking for and why NRBO was working so well, in my opinion. Looks like Mara's trying to find a bottom here. Um, John mentioning BTOG here. That's Bit Origin. That's halted here at the highs at eight fifteen. That was was about six bucks earlier today. That really kind of curling up here. Which one's the high? We've been so busy today. I haven't even checked on the Twitter streets. <laughs> oh, oh there it's popping. There you go. We're about to maybe hit six, knock on the door of six. Yeah, it'll be another, uh, it'll be the 15 EMA crossing VWAP if, uh, if we do. Got a good size at 587. We break through that, we're going to six. I think I almost figured this out. Hold on, hold on. All right, so the red, from my understanding, is your nine. The yellow, excuse me, the white is your 15. Okay, it looks a little different on uh, the trade I've view I've got chat. the 15-minute. What do you have? What, 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 what? Oh, I'm on five-minute. That's probably it. There you go. Okay, so there you go. That's that's what I've got. And again, maybe I did something wrong, but... And there you, you go. can see, like, so, there's, so the VWAP for me is yellow. Mm -hmm. The nine is red. Mm -hmm. And then the white is 15. And that's yeah. the crossover you were talking about. Yep. Those uh, the EMA crossings really, really do get uh, a lot of movement in the stocks, especially when it's uh, these uh, shorter term ones. Even the longer term ones do as well, but they tend to don't really interact with VWAP until uh, the price has really moved in one direction or the other and get the and got those uh, those VWAPs. I'm sorry, not those VWAPs, those EMAs uh, closer to VWAP. Real quick, guys, Spy tried to break above 486 here and was just flat out rejected. So looks like we're not moving above 486 just yet on the Spy. But well, we are above 485, though. That was uh, that's the level I had for resistance. Let me take a look and see what kind of inner CNMD might be curling. Plug down from its highs. Well, race did make new intraday highs, but then it came right back in. All right. Well, all right. So is, is GME GME is coming back? Is that uh, I'm just reading the chat. Yes, yeah, so I just I just no, 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 you're totally fine. So two things for me real quick on the NASDAQ futures. 17359 is the break that I'd want to see if you're trying to go long. But on this GME, I don't believe they're talking about the stock GME from what I've read on the Twitter side. How do like is this like a coin now or like what is that? Oh, where they had uh, that offering for uh, some kind of uh, crypto. Yeah, I, I remember. I know what you're talking about. Let me see. If yeah, I I'm not. Up. I'm not 100 percent sure on how it works, but I, you know, we see it in the chat, so I thought I'd point it out. But NRBO. Okay, so they issued a meme coin, trying to recreate the stock surge from 2021. 
<laughs> so it is so it is like a coin okay. yeah probably probably in the same echelon as uh dogecoin or or uh what is it shibu i, I don't yeah, know shiba the, the, the inu? Coins. Yeah, yeah 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 bitcoin and um ethereum are only ones i really pay attention to it's that that's the whole crypto market is a whole other animal i i don't understand I'll yeah i was gonna guys. say no i was gonna say i i you know perf i'm not trying to ignore you i just i just don't know how to pull it up i'm not sure how to do the analysis i'm not gonna lie to you but all right so what i'm gonna do is in case we do get a pullback i'm gonna go so last time we bought about 300 shares now we'll go about uh, 150 shares and we'll look to buy nrbo at around 503 this time and see if we get that filled you can see my stop losses and everything there and of course, disclosure, <clears throat> this is real money. However, this is not financial advice. This is just so you can watch me make money, watch me lose money, and uh, just hang out with us and chat it up. But I do have a buy limit at 503. Stop loss will be about 437. I'll probably move this up, to be honest, right around there. So I'm risking about 50 bucks in hopes of getting 100 All right, I'm going to take uh, this out. I can try and help Pref here. I think I know what he's asking for here. <clears throat> Let me give this you. a shot here real quick, Sunaid. There we go. So Pref was asking, do a GMA on Solana chart analysis. So I don't know specifically what you were asking for here, but here is the chart with the GME on it. Those are going to be your red and green candles, and your Solana USD is going to be the yellow line. So from the start of 2023, GameStop is down 24%, and Solana is up 625.8%. Um, I don't see really any correlation between these two assets, even a little bit. Um, I don't own or trade Solana, so I, I'm not actually familiar with my, myself. But when you look at it here, it is outperforming GameStop bigly. Big bigly. Bigly. Speaking of Bigly, how's DWAC doing? Okay, well, had a morning pop to 41.50, came back in, and now we're trading under 40 again. Got some of those um, primary dates coming up on the 6th and 8th of February. CN, CMND may curl here. It really needs to break that 166, 167 area on CNMD. Yeah, Risk City. I'm not sure how we can pull that up on Trading View. I'll be honest. I've never like like Ryan said. I he hasn't nor have I um, purchased what the is, coin. I mean, I can try. What's the ticker for the GME coin? That's not something I would ever trade. Or I, think, own. I think it is GME. But like the coin on Solana, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no. There's I, layers I, of onions here. Yeah, when I when I type in GME, the only thing I see is the stock, the ticker for GameStop. And to their credit, as soon as they started talking about it, it rebounded off of fourteen thirteen. It's coming up to fourteen twenty four now. Very low volume, but we're all the way back to at? flat on the day on GME. I'm looking at the five minute chart. For GME. On the stock GME. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Even though they're not talking about that, I'm still looking at GME to see if there's yeah, any yeah. correlation. Mara coming back. Evax yeah. coming down to the 65 EMA on the five minute, maybe uh, in a big maybe uh, support there. This is a interesting call here from Jay uh, mentioning ARC, which is, of course, Kathy's ARC Innovation Fund. I went ahead and pulled that up here. Uh, this is your daily chart here. Ignore the EMAs. Uh, that's designed for intraday here. Jay says, after a huge November and December, ARC down close to 20% in January. You can actually see that here. Big move from about 34 up to 54 here. Now, we've retraced some of that move. It does look like we're consolidating here, Jay. Um, to me, maybe a trade against 45 here to the upside for ARC. What do you think? Does look like the bottom's put in too. 
So maybe okay. a swing, swing long here on Arc. What do you think, Jay? Let's see. Forty-five has kind of been the support area on mm -hmm. Arc. So mm -hmm. if you're looking to trade this, in my opinion, you get to forty-four, you get out. You break forty-four, you're out. Trade that against that uh, support level you were just talking about. Rumble, good call here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brian, I know you were watching Rumble. Ryan, big blow off after making a new high. So Rumble, uh, big out of the gate here. A lot of buying volume, went to highs, stopped at about 760 here. Huge reversal here, down over a point from those highs. By the way, I know you mentioned esports for date night earlier, but we do have all access coming up in maybe about 10, 20 minutes uh, with ESE Entertainment, uh, their global entertainment technology company focused on gaming and esports. So I'm sure I'll just, you know, chat on and on and on and on and on. So that'll be. A I was I was just thinking to myself, Zunaid, I cannot think of anybody better. That's what I'm saying. To do right? that like, interview just, than you. Like, I mean, yo, for heaven's sakes, it'll it'll be fun. I'm excited, um, especially because the CEO Conrad was a former professional football player in the Canadian football league for my understanding. So awesome. You know, who says, who says gamers aren't actually athletic in the real world. Uh, hey, um, being a Chicago Bears fan, Kyle Long, who was an outstanding NFL lineman for a number of years, he actually, when he retired, wanted to move into Twitch streaming because he also feels very, very strongly about gaming, obviously has a huge platform. Yeah. Uh, get so, a phone call. I'll be right back. All right, we'll be here. We'll be left front, Zunaid, so we'll be uh, opposite of that. M-I-N-M -M here, also right beneath the VBAT 13. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, uh, it looks like uh, Bitcoin is getting rejected at the 43,000 level. It was almost there uh, above it. Uh, also noticing that the the regional banks are not having a great day at all. If you look at the KRE, uh, this thing's down pretty handily, and it looks like it could end up going lower, maybe down to 44. Yeah, I'm... Uh, the rate decision isn't isn't what regional banks wanted to hear, and I'm sure a lot of them are still on the wrong side of rates. No, and, and to your point, I think Jeffrey Gundlach brought this up yesterday when he was talking on CNBC. He said, look, some of this, some of this stuff is actually going to take a while to work through the system. Uh, we saw what happened with New York CB. They had a bunch of trouble yeah. with their commercial loans, bad loans. You're likely to see more of this. KRE is telling you that you might be seeing the same thing here. Now, what I will say here, 13, is this is a move right down to this 4750 area. I do see maybe a little bit of support, two bucks lower. I don't really see much in here. I know it looks like it's stopping on one of these lines, but this is just a 200 EMA. Let me actually bring this up on my other uh, chart tool here. Let me go ahead and bring up KRE here. Get this yeah, Solana off here. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. So KRE looks like the next stop here, 4577. That's just about where we were talking about on that support level here. So we'll see if we can come down. That would that would be the 100-day moving average, the 200-day right beneath that at about 44 and a half. Um, you know, that's a good point, Richard. Uh, my thought would be maybe wait until the job numbers come out and and then be more contrarian but I, I to your point i think that you're you're right it's it's you know for contrarians it's a good time i just think that there may be more downside after we get that uh the jobs number because the fed in their statement yesterday the one of the first things they said was you know jobs are you know so robust and they want to see uh unemployment rise they need that in order to uh, go along with their uh going under two percent inflation uh goal kre still like it's Jay saying here, uh, 13, I see that Goldman Sachs, JPM are red in a sea of green. Now, Goldman Sachs down less than a half a percent here. We'll take a look at JPM. Those of those uh, JPM down a percent here. Obviously, those not uh, mid-sized banks. Those are some of the bigger banks. Yeah, Bank of America is uh, down even further, uh, at almost two and a half percent. Um, one of the ones I was really concerned about was Capital One Financial. I don't know if that, how many people read their report, but they uh, have a credit loss provision that's more than doubled since last year, which is concerning. They, they're anticipating uh, the language season defaults. What's the ticker on that again? COF. COF. That's, yeah. I, I, I mix that one up all the time. I, I pulled Citigroup up, of course, first. But 
Everybody loves GME. You got to love the Twitter GME crowd. They are resilient. NRBO. Look at it go. Let me actually bring that back up here. I'm going to have to change this to this. Boom, there we go. And we leave a spot free for Zunaid. As a reminder, don't forget, we actually have another all-access. Zunaid rocking double duty ahead of his date night. That is commitment, if I've ever heard it. That's going to be coming up here at 10.55. We still got 20 more minutes of trading, though. We're going to try and extract some more of that money from the market here. This is the next... Uh, I'm sorry, VWAP crossing I was looking for. This would be the 15 crossing VWAP now. Let me flip back over to my scanner and see what else we got moving here. You know, someone mentioned Sing earlier. This is C-I-N-G. Okay, so Sing, this popped earlier. Now, it's come almost all the way back. It retraced about 80% of this move. It looks like it's trying to make a move back to the VWAP here. Volume has flipped from buying to selling pressure here. We'll see if that VWAP can get reclaimed. Ticker C-I-N-G, Sing. What do they do? Their biotech, okay. So the news here is that uh, Family Investment Associates has converted 3.3 million of debt and accrued interest into uh, equity for the stock mm -hmm. at a conversion price of uh, 478. That's the news today. Let's take a look at rum, see where rum is sitting. Um, big, big reversal, still moving to the low, to the lows here. Plug still moving from the lows. Once it gave up that VWAP, it couldn't get above it. It even tried to and was rejected. Peloton, oh man, Peloton. We're gonna have to pedal harder, I'm afraid. This thing really running into the ground here. 430. This is on the lows on big volume here. You mean it hasn't done that yet? Remember when this thing was in the Gosh, it was like what over eighty or something. Yeah, I mean this 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 was nuts. I mean that that whole Peloton thing during COVID, and everyone thought people were going to live the rest of their lives in their houses and ride <laughs> exercise bikes. I mean, for God's sakes, I've got the uh, high print here. Let me see. Let me go back to the weekly chart here. I got that high of forty. I might not have full candles on that one. Uh, I think we might have a request for uh, GameStop. <laughs> it's getting oh. mentioned in the chat oh 13 <laughs> 13 you got all of them jokes by the way nxt that was brought up here earlier this looks like maybe this formed its intraday bottom i've got that right about 52 uh we're curling back up off of that what was the thought in peloton here people were there was there was uh you know ide trade ideas for this right say again what was what was the the trade idea here for Peloton? Shorted? I don't think there was. A, it was just a comment by Jay earlier about how this was very similar to GoPro, right? But bike oh. on stick and then camera on stick, whatever the joke was. I thought that was great. <laughs> I mean, we're pretty close to making all time lows here in Peloton. And if we're talking contrarian plays, there's a there's one. Oh my god. So this this one this is good here, Jonathan Ryan. Remember we were looking at our our a couple of weeks back. Look how that ended up. Rich Tech Robotics traded up to twelve, and then it made the entire bottom fell out on this one, down to two bucks here. Recent IPO or spec or how did this come to market? Actually, that's a good question. I don't think this one was a spec. Let me see what I have here on this. I don't have anything beyond the 17th of November. Yeah. Oh, let's see what we got here. Underwritten over alignment option conditions. It's an IPO, initial public gotcha. offering there on ticker RR. Doesn't look like everybody agrees with that price. No, no, it certainly does not. <laughs> Mark is telling you, M-I-N-M, this is an interesting one here, right? Mini-Me, we've been talking about this one a lot here. Yeah. 650, absolutely going to be the spot. 
650 absolutely going to be that spot we're at 635 right now watch for mini me if we get a break here especially on volume through that 650 this is likely going higher yeah it's kind of holding that uh that 620 area decently well kind of trading up above and beneath it but this is that was the level i wanted to try that trade earlier and uh, i just had my stop too high and pull <laughs> and pull things definitely starting to slow down here we'll look at wendy's oh, yeah. oh wendy's on the one minute people ordering more burgers now I, that's a good i'm ordering less i can tell you that much pretty good therapeutics ptgx Oh, they report in two weeks. Lynn, take care of yourself. Great to see you again. Can't wait to see you again. Good luck. Have a great one. Hopefully we get some exciting hockey after the All-Star break. Do you have All-Star, NHL All-Star plans? You watching that skills competition and everything? Me? No, I, uh, Lynn. Oh. Uh, Lynn, I was asking. You're not a big hockey fan, are you, 13? I uh, I like going to hockey games. I'm not a particularly big person watching it on TV. Same thing with basketball. It's not TV is not for me. I'd rather go to the games or actually play it. Yeah. yeah. I only watch football hockey, on TV. Hockey is my fave sport. There is nothing like the NHL playoffs. Let me tell you. Ooh. So Etsy that put in its highs earlier. It looks like. Let's see, popped above that two or above that EMA and came back in here. If we take a look at the intraday chart here on Etsy, it looks like we might be trying to take a next leg down here. DNN, this is Denison Mines. Isn't this connected to Uranium 2, Jay? Hmm. Snow, I appreciate the invite. I, I don't know if I'll be able to make it or not, but it is going to be on my radar if I uh, have the free time. Bitcoin just getting Old a pull here. We popped above 43K. And now we're right back down to test that 43K level. Mm -hmm. Tyson, nice little intraday reversal. I know you watch Tyson quite a bit. Well, it's because I'm in it. I, uh, you know, I wanted it to go lower into the high 30s, but uh, we didn't get that. What if I Jay. ended up filling up the rest of my position that I wanted? Jay Harris, we will ring the register for you today as well. KRE puts worked out for some money. Jay Harris, go get yourself a steak, dude. That's awesome. Awesome. Yes, on DNN. All right, Jay. It might be one of the smaller ones here. ARQT, big pop here intraday on volume. Is there any news on this one? That's an old girlfriend, too, isn't no, that it? That is an old girlfriend. Nothing new here. We did have some news after hours yesterday reporting Steve Cohen reporting a 5.2% stake. How about that? And then they filed for a $300 million mix shelf. Ah, AR that's like we were talking about earlier. That's exactly <laughs> what we were talking about earlier. ARQT uh, trading back up here. This 620 area going to be in play here on ARQT. We'll see if we actually pop this and move higher. ARQT. Someone is really trying to get MINM to get out of this consolidation. It just every time it drops uh, under six, it just gets bought right back up. And so that's what kind of what I was saying here on for entry, right? We want to be able to enter on those lows that it keeps bouncing from. That way, we also have a good level for where we can stop out of this. Yeah. Wow! Happy Thursday, Jane. You've been killing it recently. What? A, yeah, she has. Yeah, Richard, I, I feel this too here. Richard, uh, hockey is super exciting. I still remember my first experience after moving to Michigan. It blew my mind. Let me tell you, hockey was one of those sports where once I started playing it, I was like, man, this is it. This is the sport for me. And there goes Mini-Me. And there's the and breakdown. Right back down. There's Holy the crap. breakdown. See, so, uh, and this is going to halt right here, by the yeah. way. This is going to halt right here, 566 to the downside if this holds. Oh, such entertainment. 
Oh no, it's uh, no, it's back. they didn't hold it. Okay, they let it they let it go. So no halt just yet. Let's see if this gets bought back up, right? This flush. This right here, this action 13, is why playing the range breaks to the upside have been extremely difficult. You have two choices. One, you can either buy the pullbacks, or two, you have to be extremely nimble when you break out of that. And really, the one of the only ways to think to do that is to place those bracket orders that you talk about yeah. so frequently. I mean, this would have, if I was in the environment where I'm trading upside breaks, range breaks to the upside, I'd have got hit right here. There's almost no way that I would have been able to exit that fast enough before this completely turned around. Yeah, and the stop might not have uh, helped you very much either because that's it's just a conversion yep. to a market order, and those the spread would, would have probably hurt pretty bad. You got that right. NRBO, we'll see if it takes out six here. Market Sniper says adding more NRBO. Going for the yo 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 low play here. <laughs> the yo yo play. Man, that was tough. I mean, to, that was tough. That's, that's what Mini Me was doing. <laughs> Mini Me was the yo yo play. <laughs> that was tough. But we persevere. Yeah, it looked like it could uh, go. get UGI moving. Lonnie says hockey up in Canada is mandatory. Lonnie, I've been told that Canadians have the innate hockey ability plus three. It's just just simply being Canadian means that you're good at hockey, which is wild. I you know, as much as I loved hockey, I was never very good. I love playing it. Uh, I love watching it. I was never very good at it, unfortunately. We're gonna need some uh whale to come in here and eat up this uh this resistance and and RPO, a lot of sell orders uh, between 590 and uh, six. Yeah, that six level is going to be the one that's important for me here. Does somebody come in here and drop a 10,000 share bid and it just goes absolutely wild. off to the moon. Off to the moon. Yeah, things 13. I don't know about how it is on your end. Things definitely dried up here on my end. Um, you know, I am seeing yeah. a report here. We talked a little bit about uh, regional banks earlier and how they might not be in good standing here. Wall, which traded up after its earnings, wall down 10, almost 11% here. Yep, we're getting uh, close to the anniversary of uh, that uh, regional bank shakeout. Ryan, <laughs> I appreciate this. Ryan, bring your rain gear slash warm clothes. Weather next week, not so hot. Pebble Beach going to be nasty. As a proud Chicagoan, I can tell you that I never <laughs> go too far without my warm clothes. I know how to handle it. Um, the rain part is going to be interesting. Isn't rain multiple days in Arizona like kind of a rare thing? It looks like we're going to be getting that for the golf tournament. Bummer. So looking to see if NRBO is going to make that move. It's been uh, uh, sl going s slowly down. Uh, easy, Mike. Tomorrow, the Fed quarterly refunding heats up, Ryan. Tomorrow, we're waiting for those job numbers. That's one of the things that we're going to be looking at. We'll see how the market reacts to that, especially after what Powell just had to say. Yeah. Yeah, he poured a uh, good amount of cold water on that uh, March rate cut sentiment, didn't he? Wasn't a surprise to us, but apparently nope. there were others that were taken aback by that. GRI here, Crow, that did, looks like it almost hit five, excuse me, almost hit five here, pulled back towards four. <laughs> Richard, this comment is, this comment reads like a novel. During my first hockey experience, four fights erupted in the stands. There was so much blood on the ice. I was shocked. I was hooked. <laughs> oh, oh, you probably I'm enjoyed glad that you're here, Richard. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you probably enjoyed that one bench clear from the Pistons game, you know, a couple of decades ago. Oh, the ago. malice at the palace, dude. <laughs> I, my goodness. I was in college when that happened, and, and they were playing the Pacers. Ron Artest now goes by Meta World Peace. Ron Artest played for the Pacers at that time. I was attending school in Indiana University in Bloomington. My and it, my friends were coming to I didn't have a car. It was during the winter, and my car I only drove it during the summer. So one of my friends was coming to pick me up, and I was playing video games the entire day after class and he goes did you see what happened in in the pistons pacers game i'm like no 
I was like, what happened? He's like, the craziest brawl fight I've ever seen took place. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, Ron Artest got a beer thrown at him from the stands, went in the stands and beat someone's ass. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? We're talking about basketball game. Oh, man. And they had it DVR. We, we, we must have rewatched that thing eight or nine times. I mean, that was unbelievable. I, oh, I've never seen anything like that before. It's amazing. That was just, you know, and and the, I, I don't know about you, but that was something that uh, a lot of people really enjoyed watching. <laughs> the tension needed to be cut, and cut it they did. But, of oh, course, man. all the announcers, oh, this is just the worst day in basketball. Bad for the league. There, you, you, got, you, had, you had players fighting fans on the court. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like that. I, I, I bet really viewership haven't. went up after that. That would would shock me, to be quite honest with you. Okay, folks, in about five minutes, we're going to be getting to our second all-access. We're going to bring Finn Zhu back on to do that, uh, crank out another interview here. Um, And then we will be back for live training tomorrow. And let me take another opportunity to tease tomorrow. Like I said, here at Live Trading, we're doing everything we can to try and bring more value, more information, more knowledge to the processed approach that we continue to cover every single day. And tomorrow... We are going to be previewing what I am going to call a new segment here on live trading, and we are going to have a very special guest for that. And I'm even going to drop a little bit more of a juicy hint in here for all of you folks that have been clamoring for more options content. Your boy got you. Don't you worry about that. I got you. We're going to have some real exciting stuff coming up here. Definitely be sure to tune in tomorrow. and We'll go ahead and introduce you to that. I'm curious if DWAC is setting up to make another uh, push to 40 again. Not saying it will. It's just, it looks like it's starting to set up to do that. And to your point there, 13, the VWAP at 4013. So it would be right there uh, if we pop back up to that. Take care of yourself, Richard. Great to see you here today. Hope to see you back tomorrow. Take care, Richard. Nash Trading. Uh, how's it going, Nash? Uh, healthcare, HCA, what do you think about it? Well, actually, um, interesting that you bring that up. I have no uh, position here in HCA, uh, ticker HCA, I beg your pardon. Um, looking at this, looks pretty good, right? We just broke all-time highs here. Um, moving up, the RSI is a little bit warm. So as far as a new trade, I'd probably wait for a pullback to a support level on this one. Um, but I actually do like this. And one of the things that I where I put my money where my mouth was, was in Humana. Uh, Humana, of course, reported earnings sold off recently. Um, Let me get the uh, daily chart up here. Sold off recently. And we have this nice real kind of big gap up to about 450. So I'm I'm trying to uh, play this here with a butterfly on Humana. I know it's down a little bit here today, uh, but I do like this. And I am long, not on the ticker that you brought up, but on another one. Yeah, healthcare has really run a lot recently. Voodoo uh, asking Rob Roy coming into the chat. Okay, a couple of things here. No, uh, it's not. Um, Rob Roy is a great drink, by the way. So uh, one of one of my favorites. Very rarely uh, gets ordered anymore. More of an old timer drink. In fact, sometimes if you go to the bar and you ask to order a Rob Roy, the bartender may look at you. Delicious uh, drink. No, it will not be Rob Roy. And that's the last hint I'm going to give you, Voodoo. So don't think you can just keep guessing. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what uh, what you have uh, in store for us because I don't yeah. do. Options. I haven't even told thirteen. I'm making him wait. <laughs> I'm making him wait. Uh, Crow mentioning that GRI. Let me flip it to the intraday chart there on GRI. Looks like this really kind of came back in. Maybe we're curling back up towards the top. Uh, GRI. M- Mini me had some. Uh, I guess we'll call this tweezers here. This could. Uh, this could be a good bounce uh, to retake VWAP. So we'll see. We'll see if we do. I've got that VWAP at 627 here. It's got to get through a couple of VMAs and uh, 620, but we, went, we we have almost matching candles here uh, on the five-minute. As long as it can hold here, then we'll, we'll see. We've got about uh, a minute left in this uh, this candle. Seeing some Google calls come in now after a rel- off the uh, unusual option scanner. Meta calls as well, by the way. Meta reports tonight, doesn't it? That's one of the big ones here tonight. So you're getting some call. Yep, getting some calls ahead of that print. Interesting. Not huge. 
Not terribly huge there. Just about 60K on the buy side. What are you thinking about uh, for Apple this, af- uh, this, yeah, this afternoon? You know what? I Are you asking about the number or are you asking about how it trades? Let's, let's do both. Okay. I think they're probably going to be. I think Apple is going to, you know, they're, they're just such a behemoth. I think that they probably beat. Um, they do a good job of, of keeping their estimates down to earth so that they can beat them. The real question for me is how is Apple going to trade? We've seen a number of these stocks beat and trade down. We've seen some of these stocks re- release a report that's really not all that great and trade up, a la Starbucks. Um, but for the, for the tech names like Apple, I, I really want to see how it reacts to the report. Now, I suspect that Apple is going to be one of the stronger ones, meaning I don't think that you're necessarily going to see a minus 9, 10, 11% day on Apple. Even if it does trade poorly, I think that that um, will not be as drastic. Some of these other names, I mean, Meta, I don't know. I, I feel like those could be a little bit more drastic of a mover. Okay. It is 10.55. We are going to see if Finzu is back, and we're going to go ahead and bring him on here. i got to be honest. This is one of my favorite things that we've done is come up with these new nicknames, Zuneda, and yours is Primo. Okay, yours is Primo. So, What do you got for us on All Access here coming up? You're muted. Zuneda is muted. muted. You know, I was coughing and sneezing on the phone call, but uh, but no, we've got a good one. We talked about biotech earlier Mm -hmm. with koya pharmaceuticals and now we've got ese entertainment of course the chat knows this y'all know this but for the new folks at home i work in the esports field right i'm a broadcaster for the nba 2k league so this is right up my alley conrad i hope you've cleared your schedule because we're gonna about we're we're gonna chat it up for a little bit here but just give me a thumbs up whenever you're ready my man and we can go ahead and get the show started he's ready to go ryan 13 any final words not that you're gonna die but do me a favor and dunk this interview i will Oh, yeah, absolutely kill it. And just be careful in that market. It looks like regionals are pulling the market down. Absolutely. I appreciate you, 13. We will see you tomorrow. Let's go ahead and talk some esports. Let's go ahead and talk some entertainment because that's exactly what we've got going on here. We're going to have a conversation with my man Conrad Wasela. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Hopefully you don't leave the studio with me. But he's the CEO of ESE Entertainment. Ticker on the TSXV is ESE and on the OTC. QX is E-N-T-E-F. All access starts right now. Conrad, thank you so much for joining us. Likewise, man. It's great to be on. I'm fired up that you got a esports background. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a great conversation for sure. But I got to know, did I, how did I do on the last name? Perfect. That's what I thought. That's what which I thought. Which I, is shocking because <laughs> typically nobody does well. That's I had sure. I watched three different interviews that you did on YouTube just to be like, all right, <laughs> they all use three different variations. But look, man, it'll be a fun conversation. I got a chance to check out your website, you know, and see what you guys have been doing as well. But before we get into the nitty gritty, just give us a heads up and an overview of what it is that your company does. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know. I really try to simplify it because sometimes gaming and particularly esports get a little bit complex, but yeah. we really position it with two very simple pillars. One is our production arm. When I mean production, so uh, when a big game developer like Electronic Arts or Riot Games uh, wants to produce an esports tournament, uh, we do that entire production. So teams come into our studios, we produce the whole event. And we distribute that on many different channels across the world. The yeah, second so- pillar uh, is more on the technology side. Uh, and that's where we also help big game developers acquire new users. Uh, so when they're launching a game, we go out and use our proprietary technology to go and acquire new users so that they come to the game, to come to the platform. Yeah, I saw you guys work with, you know, you've got Riot Games there, you've got EA, like you mentioned, they've got EAFC now, uh, yeah. which is big, and you know, we'll see how the EMLS world kind of goes ahead and gets things started as well. I want to go ahead and talk about the news that you dropped about a couple of weeks ago, which was you guys announced your crypto business with MetaPro, a yeah. little different from esports. What's that all about? Yeah, I, I mean, the reality of the esports world and ecosystem is, 
it's integrated into gaming by and large. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the crossover with crypto and gaming, it's always been a perfect marriage. Right. I think especially with the basically bull run of crypto over the past couple of years, um, it's just going to be more and more integrated into gaming, into streaming. Uh, and we wanted to find a partner that we could really integrate well with yeah. and that we trusted and that we could bring to those big game developers and build on uh, for the future. And of course, you know, there's this is publicly, in, you know, released information. So I'm happy to just talk about how you have confidence in the company as you went ahead and purchased over 300,000 shares yourself. So that's a bit of a vote of confidence, putting money where your mouth is. You also went ahead and had a couple of other news in terms of you're working with different titles and everything else. What are your thought processes on the landscape of esports in the moment, right? You've seen and noticed so many individuals being laid off. Like you have Overwatch that's taken a little bit of a hit. You just had CDL with Microsoft there that kind of took a little bit of a hit. The, the season's still continuing, but this esports winter is kind of continuing into the spring. What are your thoughts on how your business is strong enough with the foundation to kind of weather the storm here? Yeah, I think it's very important to note that we are integrated with the game developers and game publishers. Got it. So those are the most stable assets in the whole gaming e ecosystem. And that's who we're partnered with. As it pertains to esports, um, it's here to stay, right? And there's been some up and downs to your point, uh, but it's here to stay. Uh, people just game casually. It's a new way of communication, right? It's yeah. it's the new version of you know live streaming. Everyone's multitasking. I think esports really transformed. Of course, is the professional levels, uh, but there's also amateur too, and I think that's going to continue to actually grow uh, over the next couple of years. And obviously, we know the power of gaming. You yeah. see juggernauts like Microsoft buying Activision. You know they're not doing this for no reason there's yeah. a clear path of why they're doing this uh and now layer on crypto and all these other exciting things uh this thing's here to stay and it's going to continue to grow yeah i mean especially with like i said my experiences with the sports side of the esports world so you had the nba 2k league just announced <laughs> yesterday i believe about how they're going to have nba players and celebrities interact at the all-star game that's coming up here in a couple of weeks with the video game aspect of it as well. So you have a lot of pros that you've seen that stream the video games and they're off time that kind of get into that realm itself as well. What are some opportunities that you see for your company down the road here? What's interesting, what I like that you mentioned is that you're working with the developers and not necessarily the esports themselves because the games are going to be released no matter what. Exactly, exactly. Will kind of go up and down but what are some things that our viewers and potential investors can kind of look forward to in terms of what's down the pipeline to be honest i think you hit the nail on the head the convergence of now traditional sports and gaming and esports is coming to the for forefront right and you see guys like cristiano ronaldo creating his own soccer game yeah you got nba players integrating you have nhl players you know, we get calls from all the big leagues around the world that want to integrate and create that ecosystem for their fan base. Secondly to that, a lot of these players are from a different generation. I'm a former pro athlete, and we actually gamed a lot in the offseason. Yeah. But this next generation's literally next level, right? These guys are born with streaming, social media, gaming, and the, the whole nine yards, right? So uh, it's really interesting to see what happens, but I think there's going to be a very close marriage between traditional sports, music, and gaming. Um, and I think that's going to accelerate the growth, but they're basically going to be married in one, in my opinion. Yeah, but when you mentioned music and entertainment, XSET, which is an organization, they kind of come to mind in terms of how they're looking to mesh all those three things together. Something that I know you guys like to go ahead and do is bring new users and players to the video game developers as well. What's the strategy to do that, especially where sometimes parents have the stigma of like, hey, stop playing video games, which I know is less and less as professional esports individuals make more money than a lot of us do. Right. I mean, I've, I've seen people make six figures, a million dollars a year just playing video games. But what's the game plan to bring new users to these developers that you're continuously working with? 
Yeah, we have a bunch of strategic partnerships uh, in that respect. Um, we've had the opportunity to partner with Opera, uh, the browser. Uh, we partnered with them to create Opera GX, a gaming only browser. Yeah. So that's where we get a ton of our traffic, um, where we're able to acquire users from that platform. Um, but generally speaking, you know, ads throughout the internet, uh, traditional mark tech type uh, advertising uh, has been very fruitful for us. And then obviously we're collecting a lot of data uh, and retargeting uh, potential users for new games. Because like you said, there's a new game every quarter, yeah. every year, et cetera. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been really fruitful for us. We're creating a tremendous database, uh, one of the biggest PC databases in the world now for gaming. Uh, so it's been really fun uh, developing that. And it allows us actually to be very uh, deliberate with how we uh, and tactful of how we actually approach marketing and, and make sure that we're compliant uh, with all the rules and regulations. And like you said, we're huge like all the guys on our team are athletes and we want yeah. <laughs> everyone to get off the screens as much as possible, but we also <laughs> love gaming. So there's yeah. always this funny balance between the two. Yeah. Now I know you've worked with a bunch of different well-known brands, especially Red Bull. Uh, I've actually worked with the Raptors uprising GC up in Toronto and we hosted a tournament in their Red Bull gaming studio there. That was a lot of fun. The reason I bring that up is because you've got another partnership that you went ahead and announced recently. And that's with Samsung, Give us a little bit of insight on that and then we'll wrap things up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime Samsung uh, is at your door, it, it's one of the biggest groups in the world. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Riot Games has done a tremendous job and have signed Samsung on a global basis as well as Kia Motors. Right. Uh, and since we're part of their global ecosystem, uh, specifically in Europe, we were able to also land a contract with Samsung. Uh, and we're just really excited to be put in the same sentence as a juggernaut like Samsung. Yeah, it's a, it's a great partnership for sure. We've talked about a lot of things. I want to kind of give the floor to you in case there's anything else that you wanted to talk about, any topics that you wanted to discuss that I didn't bring up. Yeah, absolutely. I think you could tell by the interview that I'm excited. Um, the industry is not going anywhere. I think it's going to boom over the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And just generally speaking, you know, follow the story because we got a ton of news coming out. I would love to come back on uh, and, and chat about the news that's coming up. But yeah, stay tuned. We have some really exciting things happening in 2024. Well, hey, I tell you what, we'll bring you on. And if you need an on-air talent, you go ahead and bring me on next time you have a production because you guys are doing well, now some I know. stuff. <laughs> now oh, yeah. I know. Listen, you, you, I'm in the email invite. You got my info, but I'm excited, man. Like Saudi Arabia, they're they're just investing oh heavy gosh. money in the esports space right we thought they were trying to take over soccer with ronaldo messi and all the players but like 40 man. billion 40 yeah. billion us dollars is going to be <laughs> deployed into gaming that tells you everything these yeah. guys are all in on it it's it's insane i did dream hack in sweden with efiba it's like the world cup of uh, esports side of things and that was just incredible and of course they are like owning ELS which is now owned by Saudi Arabia you know the investors there so like the amount of money that's being pumped up there especially where you have the Olympics where they're talking about having an esport Olympics involved the same time you have the real life sport Olympics as well so long story short like I said you and I could talk about this for days and days but yes you hit me up we'll hit you up when you get news man thank you so much for hanging out with us here today that's awesome man really appreciate it Thanks so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Absolutely. You go ahead and take care and chat. Don't go anywhere because we've got Cannabis Insider coming up here in just a second. But that was my man, Conrad, was Sela. And I appreciate you guys for hanging out for all access. Cannabis Insider coming up next.